Hey guys, I wanted to quickly come on and kind of do um, a mini part two of Stranger in my house. Um, what I didn't say, I talked a lot about um, getting to know yourself by getting to know God and the overflow of getting to know God is by getting to know yourself. Getting to is how you get to know yourself, and others confirm who God says you are. And I talked about a lot about getting to, when you get to know yourself, you get to know your purpose and all that. What I what I neglected to mention is that um, there are deep wells inside of you that you don't that you don't even know yet and the stranger in your house is not only a challenging thing in that when you don't know yourself you don't know the the person in your body so you so you're trying to find yourself by all these other means. But it is also a good thing because a stranger just means you don't know yourself. So, so there is a part of you that you don't know that is a deep well of gifting and a deep well of talent of talent and a deep well of knowledge that you don't know that you possessed because simply you don't know yourself and the Lord really wants all of us, me included, to dig in the deep wells of ourselves and see see the treasure inside of us. The Lord was speaking to me last night and said there is treasure um, inside every person, untapped potential that they don't know that they possess. And getting to know the stranger that lives within them will unlock that potential. Not potential, but will unlock that gift and the whole world will get it. You're, you're stuck in a job and you know that there's more for you out there. You see it because God gives you glimpses. You're sitting at your desk and you're getting glimpses of fashion and how to use that for the kingdom. Or you're sitting at your desk and getting songs or you're getting movies and you're hearing songs and you're getting movies that c correlate with those songs and you're seeing things uh, as it relates to whatever industry you're in and you're like, and God will show you something different and you're like, oh my gosh, they could do that, not in a judgmental way, but in a, Oh my gosh, if that were me, I'd be doing that. And he's not giving those to you to be judgmental of other people and their says He's giving those to you because he's showing you what's coming for you. He's revealing the stranger in your house in the best way. And there is so, so much untapped treasure. The, the late, great Miles Monroe said, the, the most um, richest place is the cemetery because there are people who died um, with ideas and with 
um, with knowledge and with wisdom that they didn't share. And the Lord saying, leave empty. Don't die with wisdom. Don't die with the ideas. Don't die with the potential that I put inside you. If it doesn't work the first time, keep plugging, keep working until it does work. Because the reason why it doesn't, why there's so much push and pull is because some to get you to give up is because somebody needs what you have. Somebody needs the untapped the untapped, the unmined treasure within you, within your industry. Your industry needs you. That's why doors keep slamming. When they slam, push harder. When doors slam, the Lord's saying, push harder. Um, sometimes it could be... Um, a sign for you to pull back, that you're working too hard, but those aren't, for, um, but this sermon is not for those people. Um, the, in this sermon, I f- really feel God is saying, push harder, go deeper, don't stop. When there's resistance, that means there is something at the other end where people need. And resistance doesn't mean stop. Resistance means go harder. Go harder. Don't stop. Knock down every door until you get to where God has designed you to be. Resistance means that you're getting stronger. Uh, when, when you work out and you feel resistance, that means you're getting stronger. So resistance just means, oh my God, I'm feeling resistance. Nobody's getting somewhere. He's like, keep pushing. Keep working. Keep plugging. Don't give up. Because what you have inside of you, someone else needs. Someone else needs the untapped treasure that you have inside you. Someone else needs. You know how many times what in the early days, up until a few months ago, I thought no one was listening to me, so it 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 doesn't matter, and whatever, nobody's listening to me anyway, so I'm just going to give up on this live Facebook thing, I'm going to give up on this YouTube thing. Look what's happening to me now, because I stayed the course. I preached um, when I was... Down. I preached when my life was going to hell. I preached when my life was going well. I preached when when I was sick. I preached when I was in financial difficulty. Every Sunday or Saturday or whenever the Lord ordained me to preach, or at whatever time the Lord ordained me to preach, I was here. The best advice. I asked um, a friend of mine uh, who's been in the ministry for a long time. I asked him, um, what's the key to ministry? He didn't say Bible reading. He didn't say, he didn't say all of that. He said, just show up every time you are supposed to. If it's every Sunday, show up every Sunday. If it's every Saturday, show up every Saturday. Just be there. So I took that advice to heart. And every time for 12 years, I've 
been preaching. I've been sending emails. I've been putting out ideas. I've been doing all that. And just now, after 12 years of preaching and toil through the good and the bad, times when I couldn't see myself through, times when my own personal life was falling apart, I've been here. And now, 12 years later, I'm seeing the fruits of it. 12 years later, people are beginning to respond to my channel. 12 years later. What if I had given up over after the first, like, five, six years? Oh, nobody's watching. I'm going to just give up. Or, or I'm going to start. Or sometimes we don't give up, but sometimes we do things that we're not ordained to do. So what if I said, oh, I'm going to start promoting this or promoting that. Nothing wrong with that if that's what God's ordained you to do. Nothing wrong with that at all if that's what if that's what your style is and what God's ordained for you to do. No shame. But for me, God says just preach. I've gotten emails over the years saying, um, you could promote this project even on YouTube now. There are, if you promote this, we'll, we'll put out your video. And the Lord said, no. The Lord said, uh-uh, you're not here to promote anything. He said, you're not here for subscribers. He said, you're not even here for views. You're here to get the word of God out. And you'll say, how do I do that if people are not watching? And God said to me, don't worry about all that stuff. I will send the people. All you have to do is preach. He said, you're not a promoter. No shade for that if you if you wouldn't do that and that God ordained you to do that. But he says, Rachel, I've ordained you to just preach my word. Preach in season, preach out of season. Preach when you're sick as a dog just coming out of the hospital. Or preach when your computer can't get to the right size. Preach on good days, preach on bad days. Preach when you're crying, preach when you're laughing. And I've done that for the last 12 years. And look, it's just now where there's been a boom on my videos. Check for yourself. Check my older videos. Some of them have six or seven or four views. And I still did it because there was something in me that said, don't give up. People need you. People need you. And I'm going to say that to you wherever you are right now. People need your gift. People need the treasure. People, people need that out there. Whatever industry, whatever you're designed to do, people need you. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare throw in the towel. People need you. Keep plugging. Keep pushing down doors. Keep striving. And when he's ready, your gift will make room for you, as it says in Proverbs. God bless you. And may he keep you through your week. And may he give you the wisdom that you need. And bless you with overflow. And bless you with people and bless you with resources. Amen. I'll see I'll see you on Sunday for my Christmas story. I'll see you then. Bye.